Well, hello and welcome back. Thanks for coming back. Where am I? On my little hillside in Tala. Well, it's not mine, is it? But I'm on a hillside in Tala. Got a great view, by the way. Second week of December, we had a storm over the last couple of days, but uh, as is normal in Cyprus, they don't last very long and then it all goes back to normal and, and it all gets blue. I don't know if you're gonna be able to capture that view, but I've just captured that view. Just look between the kiddies play area and look at the calmness on the blue, 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 blue Mediterranean Sea. That's where the horizon hits each other and all the blueness blends into one. And I think that looks absolutely amazing. It really does. And that's the view I'm actually looking at down there over the rooftops out into the blue, 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 blue Mediterranean Sea. Fabulous, absolutely fabulous. Not bad because like I say, second week of December. So we're not bad at all. We get the odd storm. I said. What we're going to talk about today, let me think for a moment. Um, what about cars? Should we talk about cars? Because you know, a lot of people who watch the channel are either what I call flipper residents of Cyprus. So they come out for a couple of months at a time, go back, come out for a couple of months at a time, go back, or perhaps come out for three months in a year, those kind of things. Or a lot of you are thinking about retiring to Cyprus. So one of the things you're going to want is a car because, uh, well, maybe not, it depends. You know, maybe you're gonna live in downtown Kedipathos, maybe you can live to the rear streets of the promenade and you're gonna make that your little world and perhaps you don't need a car because there is a supermarket, there's shops and bits and bobs, but I would say most people coming to live in Cyprus, whether it be for a couple of months in a year, two months, two months and two months, or whether they're gonna live here all year round and just bugger off when it's too hot in July and August back home who knows, but you're gonna need a car. So let's talk about cars. How'd you buy a car? Simple. Like anywhere else in the world, you find the car that you want to buy, whether you see that car as a necessity or it's the car you fall in love with, but you find the car that you want to buy, you agree the price of it, and then you go and get it transferred into your name. The first thing you'll need to do when you've agreed to buy the said car is organise insurance because you can't transfer it into your name without insurance. So that's the easy one, isn't it? Now, there are a couple of ways to buy a car, isn't it? You can either buy it in a private transaction or you can buy it in a business transaction. So a private transaction obviously is me finding you and liking your car and agreeing to buy your car off you. So we have a gentleman's agreement or that's sexist, isn't it? A gentleman or a lady's agreement, okay? And then we transfer the money to each other. Well, I transfer the money to you, and then you're gonna give the registration document to me. Now, normally it goes very well. And the way you do that is go to either the road transport office, the assistance advice office, or the post office. Problem with the road transport office is you have to have an appointment and that doesn't sound too bad, does it? I'll phone them up and make an appointment, which you can. But the problem with that is, at the moment, their appointment system is running at about six weeks. So that one's out because you can't transfer the car. So the other one is the Citizens Advice Bureau, open from 8 till about 2 p.m. And the post office, open from 8 till about 2 p.m. And you and the other individual have got to go to either of those offices. You have got to have your insurance certificate with you and you will have to have the money and they will have to have the registration document and the MOT certificate. Lady, normally it's a lady, does the paperwork. You get the new logbook. You'll need your ID as well by and an address if, if, if you never had a car registered in your name before and the car is transferred to you. You give the person the money walk out, you get in your car, and well, I assume they walk, or perhaps they've got another car, who knows? But that's how it's done. And the fee for that is just under 10 euros. I think it's eight euros and 59 cents, 10 euros, simple as that. So it's not complicated, it's not hard. The only problem of it is, is that trust issue, isn't it? That little bit of trust. So normally, you know, you meet someone, you go, yeah, I can trust them, but uh, I wouldn't, give them, you know, someone you don't know. I wouldn't give them the money and then 
do a deal where you say, I tell you what, I'll meet you there on Monday and you come on Monday. And this is last Thursday, by the way, because maybe, maybe they won't arrive. OK, so I wouldn't do that. The other way is to buy a car via a car dealer, isn't it? So you get in contact with them, you drive around four courts, you find the car you like, you choose the car you like, you arrange your insurance, you give them the money, transfer the money, check, however you want to do it. And three or four days later, your car will be waiting. Off you go. A couple of weeks, you'll get your registration document. They'll phone you up and tell you to come and get it. So there you go. That's probably the easiest way. And you'll get some kind of guarantee, some kind of warranty, because that's another thing, isn't it? Wherever you are in the world, whenever you buy a second-hand car, there's always a little question, isn't there? Hmm. I wonder why they're selling the car. Do they know something that I don't? Maybe they do, maybe they don't. I think it's a 50-50, isn't it? 50% of the time when you buy a second-hand car privately, there probably is something wrong with it. It probably may have had that little old lady owner, but there's probably something wrong with it as well. That is a nice coffee, actually. It very is. Except the cup makes a creak. Hmm. Anyway, there we are. So, cars, second-hand cars, isn't it? Or perhaps you're going to buy a brand new car. That's probably the greatest solution in the world, isn't it? it takes all your troubles away because you've got a three-year warranty, a five-year warranty, or in some cases, a seven-year warranty. And in some cases, Toyota, 10-year warranty, provided you keep going back for a service every year after the five-year warranty has run out. So, hmm. But, of course, you're going to pay for that because if you want to buy a car in Cyprus, because that's where we are, isn't it? Let's just say that you were going to go and buy a brand new car, how much would it cost you? Let's say you wanted to buy something like, we'll pick on Toyota. So you wanted to buy a Toyota, Toyota RAV4, there you go. It's the car that ticks more boxes than any other car, and it is. You know, so you wanna buy a slightly jacked up car, you want it with four wheel drive or not with four wheel drive, you want it big enough to carry four people, you want it big enough to pop the seats down and go to the DIY sensor, right, IKEA, big enough to carry your two mates from the airport and their suitcases, those kind of things, quick enough, economical enough, and nice enough. Toyota RAV4, that's the car. And very reliable as well, isn't it? Very, very reliable. So you go and buy a brand new Toyota RAV4. In Cyprus, I know this because I've been to look at one. So they start off at 38,000 euros, and crescendo up to 56,000 euros for the plug-in hybrid one. I wouldn't buy that one, but you could if you wanted to. So the middle one, which has got leatherette seats, electric driver seat, different colored roof, all the gizmos you could want, some nice wheels. See so yeah, they hook you in, isn't it? They, you, you, you go for that price, but you end up wanting that one. That car is 43,000 euros. That's what it's gonna cost you. And it should give you trouble-free motoring for the rest of your life. And I hope you have a long, long time as well. But it won't give you a problem. But it's just cost you 44,000 euros. Or do you go and buy a second-hand car? Well, in my opinion, I would tell you to go and buy a second-hand car because you are about to lose a small fortune on your brand new car. Now, perhaps if you're going to keep it for six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, well, depreciation is not a problem, isn't it? The fact that you just lost around about 10,000 of your 44,000 euros, well, you're not going to know that for 10 years, are you? And then, of course, it's dissipated, isn't it? Is that the correct word? Into nothing. And then you've got a return on your car, probably, of six, seven thousand euros. So you lost, that's scary, isn't it? You did, yeah, you lost a lot of money, even, even over 10 years. So why not buy a second-hand Toyota RAV4? Let's say, go and get a 2021. So almost four-year-old, exactly the same car, hasn't changed a bit. All right, they tweaked the lights a little bit, but you know, you wouldn't even notice. And that one probably gonna cost you around about 28, 28 ish thousand euros. Maybe nudge into 30 with a really special one, isn't it? Which sounds a lot because, yes, it's held an awful lot of its value, but you still saved 14,000 euros and you've probably got the next model up as well. So, 
in my mind, that seems to be very, very good value. And you are driving around in exactly the same car as the man who just paid 44,000 euros for it. I know there's a lot of people out there that only ever buy new cars. And of course, that's very good for the car manufacturers because they're relying on you to keep on coming back and they can keep on pulling your pants down. And not just them, because of course, in that 44,000 euros of the Toyota RAV4, there's VAT in Cyprus of 19%. So let's call that 20%. So the moment you bought the car, the government got 20% of your money, which is a lot of money. Yeah. They also got uh, other duties as well. So out of your 44,000 euros, they got something like about 8,000 euros, like that. The dealer probably got a couple of thousand, by the way, for selling it and all the things he has to do. So there you go. Government always, always wins, don't they? Tax, tax, tax. Anyway, rant over Lord Andy, Lady Ness. Let's have a little drink of the coffee and uh, you can feast your eyes and digest upon the view in the little fun area up on the hillside in Tala and have a quick view down to the blue, 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 blue Mediterranean Sea. Nice area this, by the way. And this is the area, if you remember, well, it's quite a long time ago now, but there's a nice black cat around here. And he does pop up to you and say hi now again. I think it's, it's his land. Uh, I haven't seen him for a couple of days because it's a bit cold, perhaps. So that's why he's not around. But, uh, you know, he might turn up because I met him, ooh, what is it now, three months ago, wasn't it? And I actually went down to the kiosk and got some little dreamies and came back. And uh, he was a very, very happy cat indeed. He was, he was. Well, the first time he came back, he wasn't here. But the next time he was, and he was very, very happy indeed. So, cars. There we are. A um, little bit of information on cars. If you buy a brand new car, you have an MOT on it for four years. You haven't got an MOT it for four years. And then after that, it's every two years. If you buy a second-hand car and you're going to transfer it into someone else's name, so in other words, you're going to sell it to someone or they're going to sell it to you, you've got to have a current MOT on it for 30 plus days, so just over a month. And you can transfer the car if it's been sawned so there's no road tax being paid, as long as there's no fine on it. So as long as the person who owns the car has been a good person and sorted it, you can transfer it between each other without having insurance on the car, because of course the car is sorted, so therefore it shouldn't be driving on the road, should it? So that's one of the little peculiarities when you are swapping a car between individuals, shall we say. But. Uh, and it is a little trick where sometimes people don't go and organise their insurance and they go with you to the post office and then they tell the girl to sawn the car and transfer it from you to them. OK, and then, of course, it's not your fault. It's not your responsibility. But then, of course, then they go back out onto the road in their car with no insurance and no road tax. So, yeah, OK, dirty world, isn't it? Dirty world out there. So I, I wouldn't get involved with that individual if they said they were going to do that to you because, all right, it's not your car anymore. Well, it was an hour before, wasn't it? So perhaps you should have some responsibility. Ask the person that you're selling your car to, for example, to show you the insurance certificate before you go to the post office or the Citizens Advice Bureau. And if they say, oh, uh, say, OK, deal off. Simple as that. That's what I would do. It's not a good starting point, is it? Not a good starting point. Anyway. And bear in mind that they haven't given you the money yet either. So not a good starting point. Anyway, shall we say thanks for watching? Yeah, I ranted on enough. Hopefully you like my little rants, by the way. Uh, drop in the comments. Ask me what would you like me to talk about. And remember, I'll always deviate on something else once I. But ask me what would you like me to talk about. Drop in the comments. Uh, I'll say thanks for watching. If you like what you see, hit the like. Smash that subscribe. Please don't forget to keep on coming back for that little bit more of my complete and utter madness, insanity, as I talk to you about living on the island of love. And I've lived here for 16 years, soon be 17. Time goes, doesn't it? Soon I'll be in a box or perhaps on a canoe floating out into the blue, blue 
blue, blue Mediterranean Sea. Thanks for watching. I look forward to your company again very, very soon indeed. What do you think of that for a few Baroness Crackpot? Baron Frank, is it better than downtown Glasgow? Drop it in the comments.